What? I'm you, can't, do you can't get I'm peace with people like that. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going to do something that nobody done on your television. Mm. You know what I'm going to do I'm on your episode? I'm, I'm going to do. I am going to pretend that I'm an Israeli citizen. I'm going to put my, my myself in the in the place of an Israeli settler in the kaputs. And I want to speak to my prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, I have voted for you because you have promised us peace and prosperity and security. On the 7th of October, those son of bitches Hamas, they went into the fence that is regularly heavy, heavily guarded. Usually if there's like a, a, a dove that comes close to it, it will be shot. Mm -hmm. Those people went in and they went for six hours before IDF forces was deployed killing our friends, our families, kidnapping our grandmothers and babies, and went in. I want to ask you, Mr. Prime Minister, after you have fractured the Israeli community and you have fucked our courts, our Supreme Courts, what are you doing with the money being given to you, to the United States? Also, you are carpet bombing Gaza with absolutely no regard to our hostages, our people. I heard a rumor in the kibbutz that you're doing that as an, you let that happen to, as an excuse to carpet bomb Gaza, so you push them into Sinai. And I didn't believe it. That's like, not my prime minister. He can never do that. And then I watch an interview for Danny Ailon. He was your chief advisor. He was also the Israeli ambassador to the United States. And you know what he said, Mr. Prime Minister? He said that the solution for those Palestinians is to go into a vast land of Sinai and live into tent cities temporarily, huh? Temporarily, wink, wink, until we build Gaza again, and then we invite you back. Aha, yani optahna ba, yani family. As we've seen this movie before, so yani, and, I, and when I saw this, I couldn't explain to my fellows in the kibbutz how come our Israeli government is trading human lives for another piece of land. So as an Israeli citizen, I need to hold my Israeli government accountable, and as an American citizen, I want to know all of these money that we are giving to Israel. We're giving them $4 billion every year. Joe Biden said it's the best investment they ever, America ever done. Well, I, if I am in the, in the place of Joe Biden, I would say, sorry, don't speak. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, would, I would say if I was Joe Biden, I would go down and whisper in the ears of Netanyahu and tell them I hate that investment. They haunt me, you know, like Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. But the thing is, the thing is, this is the problem. Israel always victimizes itself. And I have never seen a victim putting their oppressor under siege and bombing them 24-7. Israel wants you to believe Good point. that they are the victim. Is, dealing with Israel is so difficult. It's like being in a relationship with a narcissistic psychopath. He fucks you up and then he makes you think it's your fault. All right, you Basim. look at Israel as uh, Superman, but they're really homelander. Wallah, they're First of all, before Pierce says anything, what he's saying makes a lot of sense. You have to use um, these adjectives that he's using to describe uh you know, how the behavior, the characteristics, actually, of, of uh, what Israel is doing as a government. Um, you know, it, it, I've done that before myself, and you, you can't see that they have uh, sociopathic, uh, narcissistic, psychopathic, uh, you know, ways of dealing with things. And, and then it, goes, it, it brings back the earlier point that, that Bassem said, which is what I said that Einstein said as well. You know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and getting the same result, what do you think is going to be different? Einstein said when you do that and you get the same result and you keep doing it, it's insanity. This is insanity. And all the people that are backing this up, that are saying it's okay for Israel to do this, and are happy about it, they're all insane. That's how, that's how I look at it. This is human life, you know. Um even Mahatma Gandhi, you know, and going back into the ancient uh, books, you know, they talk about, you know, violence begets violence. It's in every single Bible in the world. They all know it. As a matter of fact, both Islam and uh, Judaism uh, and Christianity, especially, and Hinduism, all say that violence begets violence. So how do you condone the idea? How do you condone it, uh, especially if you're... Uh, a government that's based in Judaism or a government that's based is in, in Islamic, uh, you know, philosophy and religion. So both of them really have faults here. I don't want to pull uh, one away from the other or separate them. They're both guilty here. 
But at the same time, the person that is in power, the people that are in power, the government that has more power, has more control of the situation. And I think that's where the discrepancies happen, you know. And uh, there's definitely something way off in humanity for people to think that this is okay. And, and you know, I saw a video earlier of a, a doctor in Palestine that this actually hurts my heart to when I think about it. Um, he the the building that they lived in was hit by israeli bombs uh, missiles his wife daughter and son uh were i mean they were definitely traumatized by it it was horrible but then they realized one of the children were missing one of the boys the youngest boy and they looked for him and then they said finally after they couldn't find him he said the last place to look is the morgue and he went there and they showed him the body and he couldn't even he turned away from the camera and the pain you could if you don't feel that pain there's something wrong with you you know there's really something wrong with you if you don't feel that pain um for him to uh be a doctor and deal with this stuff all the time and then being in that situation to lose a son that way must be horrific and i don't care if you're american or whatever part of the world that you come from you have to have a heart and understand how this man feels. It's like any other person in the world. It's it's a horrific um, tragedy, and uh, hopefully people can understand that and it'll get people's hearts to open up and change the situation, you know. Also, the other thing I wanted to put in here is that he's using a lot of profanity like I do as well when I get emotionally roused. Um, you have to understand that in these situations, it should be allowed. There's nothing wrong with venting verbally and using profanity in situations so intense. Of course, you don't want to do the entire show like that, but sometimes expletives fit better than any other word that you can find, you know, to get the emotion out, you know, and I think that's what it is. They are like, they are, you, you, they are shooting Basim, fish I want to say in the one barrel thing. and they are annoyed with the splashes. Basim, I want to say two things. One, if you could just slightly manage your language. We are on I, 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 if you keep saying. I, I'm very sorry. Okay, I knew this asshole was going to do that. I'm sorry, but he is an asshole because that's the only card you can pull at this point. You're not even listening to the fucking argument, you asshole. You know, and, and that's what gets me upset is that you bypass the argument to pick on... On, on the type of language being used, you know, uh, emotionally, they may not be physically hurt, but emotionally, they are, they are very wounded. What do you expect? What do you expect? You know, um, that, that, that's pathetic, Pierce, very pathetic. Sorry, we I have am, to I am, apologize to viewers. You may be offended by that. I um, oh, my God. And he even pushes it far that you have to... Okay, wh where does he think this is being broadcast? You know, uh, <laughs> we're in America, you know, where people kill fucking children here just because they're different colors. So, <laughs> what, this is not, I don't know what America you live in, but I'd sure like to visit and see what it's like. It's not the one I, I, I was born into. What an asshole. But I understand I passions run high, so let's not get too bogged down about the old swear word. I apologize word. to the um, viewers. I apologize to the viewers for my language. I, my second question the, is this: the, after the, the sight of, uh, of dead civilians, after the break, we have the. You shouldn't have to apologize, Bassam. He should apologize, if anything, for being an asshole. The managing director of the Daily Wire, which is Ben Shapiro's company, we were going to interview him on his own, but he's happy to come on and talk with you directly if you are prepared to stay. Well, of course, I, I, I can stay, but again, I am in a disadvantage and I would like to have my space to respond. Okay, we'll come back after the break. I do, stay I, there, I, Basim. I, 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 because, because, because here's the thing. There's Basim, two things we, we're going to go to a break. Before, right? When we come back from the break, we, we'll be you and Jeremy I, Boring my, my, from my, the Daily Wire. My, 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 I have news we're taking a short break, Basim. I'll be back. He cut him off in the middle of what he was trying to say. Interesting. Ooh.